That's so disgusting. That's so disgusting. Guys, guys, with a charge shot. With a charge shot. Who, who decided this was okay? <laughs> who decided this was fine? Yo, what's going on, everybody? Ganyu is absolutely insane. Uh, absolutely broken. I hope they do not nerf this character because the amount of damage she is able to output is so incredibly, like, almost dumb. It feels so stupid easy to kill all the content in the game right now. It is so good. It is so incredibly strong. I'm gonna show you guys my build so you guys can see how to hit, like, really decent numbers with a pretty mediocre setup. So just to preface this, I am doing all this live because I am really constrained on time this week, but I wanted to just show you guys as soon as possible. So looking at Ganyu's artifacts now, let me let me tell you guys something that's probably gonna blow your mind. I'm not even currently using the most optimal set for Ganyu, and I'm gonna tell you what the most optimal set for Ganyu is, and I'm gonna tell you why I use this other one. Uh, but if you consider the damage numbers that you're able to get currently, like when you'll see them later in the video as well and in the intro of the video, those are the damage numbers you are able to get with the Blizzard Strayer set. Now, why is the Blizzard Strayer set not the best set? It's because Wanderer's Troop, we were actually wrong about this. Wanderer's Troop actually increases your charged attack damage by 35% and the charged attack actually increases the bloom damage. So so real quick, if we go back and we look at the talents and we um, look at our normal attack, mine is level 11 because I'm using Cartaglia and I maxed it day one because I'm a simp. And if you look at Frostflake arrow damage, it does 243% and Frostflake arrow bloom damage is 413%. Now initially what we thought was gonna happen was that the cryo set was gonna be better because it added 15% cryo damage and it would affect both the shots. But what we didn't actually know at the time is whether or not the Frost Flick arrow and the AoE were part of the charge shot. And as it turns out, the second level of charge with the AoE counts as part of the charge shot, which means that you're gonna be doing extra damage with the Frost Flick arrow because it's gonna do 35% more damage on impact. And now that is technically the best set if you don't consider Retracing Bolide. Now Retracing Bolide actually adds an additional 40% of normal and charged attack damage. So this is gonna hit both your charged attack and your basic attacks while you're shielded. So if you consider something like this with Ganyu and Diona, if you can get a lot of shield uptime on Diona, Retracing Bolide is actually gonna be the best set for her. But I'm not gonna use Retracing Bolide personally. I actually built this Cryo set in anticipation for the Wanderer's Troop thing not working. So I'm using the Blizzard Strayer set and all the damage you see me doing in this video is on the Blizzard Strayer set. However, the Wanderer's Troop set is going to be the status quo for her. And if you have a shield composition, then Retracing Bolide is going to be definitively the highest damage output set for Ganyu. But as far as stats go, they should all be the same. You should be going for attack sands, cryo damage, and you should be going for crit damage. And the reason you should be going for those three is because attack sands is, is literally because you don't necessarily need energy recharge because your AOE gives you a bunch of energy back when you hit a bunch of enemies. Whereas with the goblet, you're getting cryo damage bonus on everything that you do, assuming you're not normal attacking or auto attacking. I think that physical damage kind of falls off, especially for Ganyu. So I think that cryo damage is definitely worth it, especially considering how much uptime she has. And then looking at this crit damage, the reason you want to build crit damage is because she has a passive. And we'll talk about this passive in a little bit but this passive makes it so that way when you get a subsequent hit with a Frostflake arrow AoE, it actually increases the crit rate of that AoE by 20%. So that makes it so you are much more likely to hit. And if you're using Cryo Resonance, you're going to get another 15% crit rate. And on top of that, if you look at her Ascension, her Ascension skill is actually crit damage. You can't really tell because I have uh, the crit damage piece on, but I have 162% crit damage, which means that her crit damage has increased from the standard. So what you see here is not the correct set, but it is a very very good set. What you want to be running is the four piece Wanderer's Troop set and I'm gonna go ahead and slap that on now. So ultimately mine are not built yet but they will be built for the video that is coming on Ganyu the ultimate guide that we are gonna put out as we usually do. Um, but these are going to be the best options for you. If you don't have a full Wanderer's Troop set that has attack sands, a cryo damage goblet, and crit damage headpiece your next best thing is going to be probably attack percent because Ganyu's attack percent is insane. She has the same base attack as Diluc so that is is going to be super helpful. But again, in the meantime, if you built Blizzard Strayer, it works just fine on her. You're getting a lot of damage. It's just not technically the best. It's also worth noting that the Amos Bow effect actually hits the Bloom Arrow as well. It does increase the charged attack damage based on how far the enemy is. So it's really good to take note of that. I am going to be coming out with the normal guide like I do every single time a new character comes out that I have access to. I will be making a guide on her, but those usually take a couple days. I just wanted to share this as soon as possible. What I'm running right now is Amos Bow level 80. 
I can get this to level 90 for even more damage output. It's refinement one, it's not gonna get any better unless I pull four more Amos bows and that's not gonna happen, uh, but the damage is already there, the damage is already crazy high. And as far as constellations, I'm actually at constellation zero as well. People were saying, oh, she's a support unless you're C6. That's not true at all. That is not true at all. Her damage output is just insane. I have never seen a character hit consistent charged attacks that do that much damage in AoEs. There is not a single character in the game that does that that well. To put in perspective how much damage this is, if you look at her normal attack, she does a total of 413% plus 243% for me at talent 11. The reason it's 11 is because I'm running Tartaglia. And to give you an example of how much damage that is, people thought Tartaglia's ultimate was broken because of the damage scaling. Granted, mine's only level 6, but it does 650%, which means you are, in essence, you are doing almost as much or more damage than a Tartaglia ultimate at talent level 10 and 11. And that's on a charge shot bow character and an AoE. So you are essentially getting the same value for no cost whatsoever. But as far as bows, Amos bow is what I'm using. I tried the Skyward Harp. I actually didn't like the Skyward Harp because the 20% crit damage was the only thing that mattered. I found that the crit rate wasn't really relevant if you ran Cryo Resonance and you ran uh, the Cryo set. So I'm not having a problem with crit rate, um, which is why Amos bow is better because the attack affects both the initial shot and the shot after by a lot. As far as other bow options go, Stringless is not really for her, to be honest, unless you're running her as a full support. Uh, like I said, I think that DPS outshines Ganyu support by a long shot. You can absolutely use her as a support because her kit allows you to, but I think that the amount of damage you get on her charge shots is too good to ignore. So this will be good because it increases elemental skill and elemental burst damage, and that's really what you want to look for if you are running her as a support, but I don't think anyone is. Beardicent Hunt is nuts, it has crit rate, but I also, like I said, the same way I found crit rate redundant with Skyward Harp, I think that crit rate on this is not incredibly necessary. Granted, since her attack scales so well, the Cyclones that are created with Veritas and Hunt will do a ton of damage, so that's worth keeping in mind. The reason I'm not running her with the Favonius Warbow is because I'm running her as a DPS, and Energy Recharge is kind of redundant on her as a DPS. You're getting Energy Recharge for every single Cryo enemy that you hit with your AoE and enemy that you hit with your non-AoE attacks as well, and honestly, like, her Q uptime doesn't matter that much to me. I think that you can get enough Q uptime with just substats on her artifacts, and you're missing out on a multiplier, so honestly, if you're gonna run her as a DPS, don't use Favonius. The reason I say don't build compound bow is because her attack is insanely high but she's not meant to be a physical damage dealer when you look at how much cryo damage that she outputs and normal and charged attack hits increasing attack is great but they only last about six seconds and it takes like a second and a half to charge a full shot that you want to charge so ultimately i don't think compound bow is as efficient as prototype crescent because prototype crescent actually increases your attack and it makes it so you get a big attack bonus once you hit a weak point so it allows you to kite around and solo content easier with Ganyu, and you get an attack bonus, and it's a free-to-play weapon, so you might as well build it if you don't have access to the other ones. I don't have Rust to show you because I've never pulled Rust, but Rust increases your normal attack damage and decreases your charged attack damage, so it is really counterintuitive to Ganyu. The only reason you don't need to run Cryo on her bow is actually because of her first passive talent, which makes it so after firing your Frostflake arrow, the crit rate goes up by 20%, which is insane because it basically just makes it so that way you don't have to worry about getting that extra 20% on the bow itself. You can just use the attack multiplier. And then of course, Harmony Between Heaven and Earth is like really important as well because it gives you a 20% Cryo damage bonus when you're in the AoE. And if you stack that with something like her Constellation 1 that lowers their Cryo resistance by 15%, it just makes her do so much damage. Of course, Constellation 2, I think, is one of her best ones because getting two taunts is amazing. Cloud Shrider increases the level of Celestial Shower. Opponents standing within the AoE of Celestial Shower take increased damage. Now, this is crazy because Constellation 4 makes it so whenever you have your Q up, which you should have 100% uptime, ideally, everyone's going to take a ton of extra damage, which means that you're going to be able to just keep, like, snowballing enemies. And it's not like she really needed more damage to begin with, but the fact that she can make more damage happen is crazy. The Merciful increases her taunt level by three, which is just really good. This one's insane too. When you use her taunt, the next Frostflake arrow she shoots doesn't have to require charging. So you just right click and you shoot it immediately and it does the AOE. So what it allows you to do is instantly dash back and right click and shoot. And that's going to allow you to get that AOE damage off in a ton of burst. Like it's going to draw all the enemies towards it and you're going to immediately shoot them. And then you can start charging again. It's basically like an extra charge. And considering she does so much damage already, it basically just doubles the amount of damage you're going to do in that instant 
of a burst. So for looking at melt comps, I actually don't think she's that efficient, and I'm gonna tell you guys why. Because she has so much cryo uptime, it's really hard for her to be the trigger. Now this actually makes it better for pyro characters, because if you use her as a support, then pyro, it works really well, and then the, like melt comp would, in theory, be good. But the problem is that she does so much damage that I think she outclasses most of the other pyro characters that you would use with a melt comp with her. So for that same reason, I don't know that necessarily building a melt comp is as efficient as building something like a freeze comp. Like if you throw down her taunt and you use Barbara to kind of AoE everyone into Hydro and then freeze them, I think that's going to be much more effective considering how much damage Ganyu does. Now, if you do decide to go with a melt comp though, there are some things you can do to optimize that. Um, what really works well is if you drop Ganyu's taunt and then you drop Guoba from Xiangling down right next to it, they'll take constant fire damage until the taunt blows up. And a lot of times the taunt won't blow up for a couple seconds, so you'll get some extra pyro and then you can uh, hit them with cryo with Ganyu and it's gonna do a lot of damage on the first shot. But again, you don't get the multiplier on both shots most of the time because the second hit is going to be cryo and the first hit's already cryo erasing the melt. So you kind of lose out on that ability to do melt cobs. But again, Shongling's good because she has a lot of pyro uptime, especially with her Q and uh, Guoba, she's really good. I think honestly, Amber's pretty good with her too. And a lot of people are like, ooh, Amber bad. But I think if you use Amber's taunt and then you shoot with a cryo arrow that has the AOE around the taunt, you're gonna get melt damage from Amber um, either after that explodes or before it explodes. But either way, you're gonna get that melt damage damage with Amber, and then she also has her arrow rain, which is another pyro applying thing. So you can at least get the 1.5 times multiplier with the melt, um, rather than the two times multiplier if you need to. Now shatter comps are actually pretty good, but you have to make sure you're running a hydro. So again, using Barbara with Ganyu is actually really, really strong. Jinshu with Ganyu is okay, but the problem is that you have to get an auto attack carry or an auto attack character that you don't mind losing uptime for to make sure that you hit with swords. Because honestly, if you're gonna use Ganyu, her auto attacks are totally usable, but they're not as optimal as using her charged attack. Honestly, you can you can hit them with Ganyu's auto attacks, but I just feel like the charged attacks outclass autos by so much that it might not be worth using Shinshu on Ganyu as much as it would if you had another physical carry as well, or if you were using Barbara. Tartaglia is able to apply a lot of hydro damage though if you use his arrow shots when you're taunting with Ganyu. Again, a lot of her kit revolves around her taunt, using her taunt to make sure you can apply other elements if you're going to build her a team comp. That goes kind of all in on elemental reactions. Or alternatively, you could just solo the entire game with Ganyu because her DPS is so incredibly broken. It's really up to you. But anyways, that's it for this video. I just wanted to let you guys know how good Ganyu is because a lot of people were really unsure. Obviously, we did that poll last night and people were voting that she's a support. And then this morning, some big YouTuber said, hey, she's actually a DPS. And uh, guess what, guys? We were right. She was a DPS. She was absolutely broken. She is absolutely broken. And I'm a little scared for power creep, but I also think that like this is really great. If you're going to pull on a banner, this is a really good one to do it on. I am telling you this now. She is such an incredible unit. She outputs so much damage it's worth it it's absolutely worth it most of these hits i'm doing aren't even max hits they're just normal charged attacks so definitely consider pulling on this banner if you were kind of on the fence about it i think it's worth it and of course i'll get you guys a thorough in-depth guide um, where everything is like scripted and, and nice and organized relatively soon so just keep your eyes peeled for that as usual if you've enjoyed watching make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more kitchen impact content i will catch you guys next time Thank you.